name Kirkwall comes from the Norse Kirk Yugavar, which means Church Bay. It is first mentioned in the Orkney Inga Saga in 1046 AD, soon after Earl Ronald Brucison had completed St Olaf's Church, which is dedicated to his foster father, King Olaf the Holy of Norway. This is the Kirk of Kirkwall, not the cathedral that you can see on the horizon. Take a walk through Kirkwall's history to the cathedral with me. Kirkwall in the early days was a small settlement of a few streets by the church. Merchants traded at the harbour nearby. If you look to your right as you leave the ferry building, you will see the Gurnall, which was built in the 17th century to store the grain, which was paid as rent in kind by the Earl's tenants. Let's stroll up Bridge Street now, which is directly ahead of you. Look out for St Olaf's Wind on the left-hand side. This is the site of the Kirk of Kirkwall, St Olaf's Church. It was founded in 1035 and was likely of wooden construction. The sandstone arch which you can see on the north side of the wind was rebuilt in this position and probably dates to Bishop Reed's restoration in 1550, although it may be earlier. The church was destroyed in an English assault in 1557. Moving on to the top of Bridge Street, you can see Stevenson's paper shop. Behind this was the site of the old Orkney Parliament, the Ting. We are now on Albert Street and on the right hand side we can see the Customs House. Note the crest on the front. The house dates from the first half of the 19th century and was originally part of the townhouse of local notable Captain Balfour of Shappensey. Just before the street widens into Broad Street, stop for a moment and look at the Big Tree, a sycamore which is an affectionately regarded local landmark. The next street to the right is Castle Street, which marks the site of Kirkwall Castle, which was built in circa 1380 by Henry Sinclair, one of the Scots Earls of Orkney. It was demolished in 1615 at the behest of James VI, King of Scots, following the rebellion led by Robert Stuart, Earl of Orkney. Some of the castle stones were used in the construction of the harbour's West Pier. Back on Broad Street, we come to the Town Hall on the right-hand side. This was built in 1884 and is one of the few examples of Scottish baronial style in Kirkwall. The Town Hall replaced the old toll booth which stood opposite until it was demolished in 1890. The magnificent 16th century townhouse you will see on the right hand side now is Tankerness House, which was originally two manses for the cathedral. It became the property of the Bakey family of Tankerness in 1642. It is now the museum. Hidden behind Tankerness House in the beautiful gardens is the folly known as the Grote House. This Gothic-style garden house dates from the 18th century, is topped with a spire and is decorated with stones which formed part of the ballast of the Orkney pirate John Gow's ship. It has recently been moved to its present situation. You are now standing in the middle of the best preserved medieval Norse town centre in Europe. Looking along Broad Street, you will see not one but two palaces, the Earl's Palace on the left and the Bishop's Palace, which is considerably older, on the right. The Earl's Palace was built in 1600 by Earl Patrick Stewart and is probably the finest example of Renaissance architecture in Scotland. Do not miss seeing the Great Hall, which is one of the largest in Scotland. Note too the oriel windows and the carved decorations. The building was never fully completed as Earl Patrick ran out of money and then was executed for treason. The building has been roofless since 1745. The Bishop's Palace was originally built for Bishop William the Old in the 12th century and it is here that King Haakon of Norway died after losing the key battle for supremacy in Scotland, the Battle of Largs, in 1263. The palace was rebuilt in the late 15th century and further improved by the last of the great Orkney bishops, Robert Reed, in the mid-16th century. He added the large round tower at the north end known as the Moosey Tour. Earl Patrick intended to incorporate this building into his plans for his own palace, but fortunately died before he could do so. And finally, we reach Journey's End, the cathedral founded in 1137 by Earl Ronald Cully Coulson in memory of his martyred uncle Earl Magnus Erlandson. It took more than three centuries to build, so you can see three different styles of architecture, Romanesque, Transitional and Gothic. It is made of local sandstone, both yellow and red, and you can see that this particularly well in the door arches. The masons are popularly supposed to have come from Durham Cathedral. 
Before you go inside to start your tour there, take a look at the Mercat Cross outside on the Kirk Green. This is a replica of the original 1621 stone cross which was moved to this location in 1762. The original is inside the cathedral. The cross has important social significance for the community. It is here that the ball is thrown up for the Christmas and New Year's Day men and boys street football games known as the Bar, for example. Public proclamations are made here and it was also used as a public pillory in days gone by. I will leave you now to go to, into the cathedral. Be sure to note the interesting memento mori gravestones and the exquisite stained glass as well as the font in the St Ronald's Chapel decorated with stones collected by children from each Orkney parish. Thank you for joining me on a stroll through time. <laughs>